So now that you guys know how to set up ACES and OCIO, let's actually take a much deeper dive into understanding where this all comes from, what it's trying to achieve, and what this does for your renders. This information is really, really important for not only understanding what you're doing whenever you're using ACES, but also if you're ever trying to composite something or try to make something match film footage that you have, this understanding of color science comes in real handy in quite a few different situations. So in order to explain all these different ideas, we need to take a field trip away from the world of CG and into the world of science and cinematography, because that's where all this stuff originally comes from. And to do this, I have a whole cast of characters. We have me, Tyler, hanging out at the Grand Canyon, just, you know, having a swell time. We have our friend Shrimpy. We have a camera named Red. And we also have this JPEG file named JPEG. So, when Tyler goes out and sees things in the real world, his interpretation of color looks like this. And we have this fancy triangle to represent the colors that our eyes can see. So for right now, we'll call this triangle Tyler's color space. It's the color space that my eyes perceive. It's kind of like the color space that's going on in my head as I interpret these colors. Now, we also have Shrimpy, and he's probably the coolest one here in the bunch because he could see colors that exist beyond Tyler's colors. So if we take a look at Shrimpy's color space, it might look something like this. He could see colors and UV lights and infrared and all kinds of crazy things, right? Because he can see much better than Tyler can. So we could say that we have Tyler's color space. Here's the interpretation of colors. Here's Shrimpy's color space. This is also an interpretation of colors. And again, Shrimpy's going to see colors that our eyes can't even see. So that's why this triangle goes beyond Tyler's color space. But then we also have Red's color space. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So whenever we have light hit a camera sensor, as an example, uh, we are only interpreting the light in the environment. So a video camera, no matter how hard it tries, is really just an interpretation of the light that's hitting the sensors. Oftentimes, a video camera, no matter how expensive, isn't ever going to match the quality of light that we see with our own eyes. It's just trying to replicate what our eyes are seeing. And so we could say that red's color space is really just a portion of the visible light spectrum. So we can understand it again by drawing out this triangle, which exists within the color triangle. And actually this color triangle here, more technically speaking, is called the International Commission on Illumination, 1976. So, you know, I kind of like fancy triangle. It has just a, a bit of a, a better ring to it than the, you know, official name. But basically, it's just a triangle that represents the light we can see. Now, JPEG is interesting because this will also tell us something about the word color space. A JPEG is a file on our computer that stores color information. And as it stores color information, it's only going to store what it wants to see. So this is JPEG's color space. And maybe instead of saying JPEG's color space, we can just call this SRGB. So I think maybe you have a sense on where this is going now. Color space is essentially the color that we either interpret or in the case of JPEG, the colors that we express. And if we say that something's in Tyler's color space or sRGB or red's color space, what we're talking about is the way that something interprets or expresses light. Now, just as one more technical note here, if we take a look at the corners of these triangles, these could be understood as our primaries or RGB primaries. And actually, in the computer, these are just coordinates that are expressed relative to this triangle. So the RGB primaries are just a way of representing all these different colors. It's a way of drawing out this triangle. 
And whenever, let's say, you're working in Photoshop or whenever you're working in uh, Houdini and you're saying that something has a pure red color, all you're saying is that the color is going to go wherever the R is on this RGB primary. Or same with green or blue. You're just selecting colors based on where this color space is defined. So think about this for a second. Be sure that this is crystal clear. And as soon as it is, then go ahead and move on to the next video.